Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll talk about Rule 6 of the responsibilities of the investigator according to good clinical practice. More after the break. Rule 6. Ensure protection of trial subjects. Prior to starting the study, a written approval of the Ethics Committee must be present. According to GCP, it is the investigator's commitment to ensure the availability of such approval prior to study start. Even though this task is often gladly undertaken for the investigator by sponsors and CRO, the formal responsibility nevertheless lies with the investigator. Check. If everything has been approved in the desired way, if you as an investigator and your colleagues as sub-investigators have been approved, if amendments made to the protocol have been approved, if the correct version of the patient informed consent form has been approved and so on. In addition to the approval of the ethics committee, a signed informed consent form for each individual study subject must be available prior to the first study-related activity. This informed consent consists of two parts, on the one hand the already mentioned written part, which is unfortunately far too long in many cases these days. An informed consent form often comprises more than 20 pages of text, which is partly due to reasons of data protection and liability. However, many patients are overstrained with such a flood of information, which is why it is of paramount importance that you inform the patient verbally each step of the information process should be recorded. Thus, in the medical record should be noted how the information has been provided, at what time this happened, and which persons were present as witnesses. Also questions asked by patients should be recorded there as well as the answers given. If there is a discrepancy between the dates of the signatures of the principal investigator and the patient, this should be clarified in writing. Precisely this latter point is frequently queried during audits. The investigator must document the information and consent process in a logical and chronologically comprehensible way. It is particularly important that the investigator never fills in the informed consent form with the date in advance. Always have the patients or their legal representatives enter the current date by themselves, otherwise nobody can see if the patient really consented prior to study start or after. The informed consent must contain a note that the clinical study is part of a research project, and the purpose of the study and the name of the sponsor including address must also be stated, as, in the case of randomized studies, there is the probability of random assignment to study arms. Process-related information on the study must be given in an easily comprehensible way. For example, it should be explained what randomization actually is. The informed consent is a very complex process, and an investigator should take a deep look in the forms not to miss a thing. It includes procedures, commitments of the trial subjects, reporting of side effects and hospitalizations, the experimental aspects of the study described in an understandable way, foreseeable risks or inconveniences to the subject, the expected benefits to the patient, alternative treatments, and the compensation or treatment available in the event of trial-related injury, compensation for expenses, for example, travel costs and data production, the voluntary participation, and also the possibility of withdrawing consent for participation at any time without giving any reasons must be explained. The informed consent must always be written in the subject's native language. In addition, the age group has to be considered. The investigator should provide the subject with ample time and opportunity to inquire about details of the trial and to decide whether or not to participate in the trial, and he or she should only sign the informed consent form. After you have answered all questions, generally the process of informed consent thereby needs to be documented, that subject and investigator sign and date the informed consent form, before any trial-related procedure is conducted. If you want to learn more about the informed consent, please watch our video on that topic. So much about the Rule 6 for investigators, 
We will look into each of the other rules in future videos, so stay tuned. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. Goodbye.